I like to describe the two narratives that I see out there, what I describe as blame the system or blame the victim. In a blame the system ideology, that's a view of our country, it's a view of America as a place that's inherently oppressive, that based on your race, your class, your gender, there are these systems that are just rigged against you. You know, maybe there's a, if you're black, there's a white supremacist lurking on every corner. Uh, capitalism is evil and that these systems are so discriminatory, so oppressive that you have no agency, you have no independent ability to lead your own life. But on the other side, there's this other narrative that I call blame the victim. And in that narrative, America is great. America is not the problem. You're the problem. There's some pathology that you have. You haven't pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps. You haven't taken advantage of all the opportunities uh, that exist in this great country. And so between blame the system and blame the victim, that's very disempowering because either you are powerless against these systems or it's your fault that you have not been able to take advantage of these opportunities that exist in America. And I find both of these uh, narratives um, dangerous for our country because it robs, particularly young people, of this idea that they can lead a self-determined life. An agency I define as the force of your free will guided by moral discernment. The force of your free will guided by moral discernment. So if you think of agency like a vector or velocity, velocity is not just speed, it's speed and direction, hmm. right? So if you as a young person are starting to think about your life, you know that you've got free will, but how is it that you're gonna wield that will? Towards what direction? And so agency is what I like to believe if we can cultivate a new age of agency in our country, we'd have a much more optimistic, future-oriented generation that's rising. But the key point is agency doesn't just come from nowhere, right? because we all have free will, but there are lots of people that exercise free will that aren't good people, mm. right? So how do you learn how do you, to become a morally discerning person? And that's why I've created this framework that I call free, which is really focused on the key institutions that help young people develop agency, family, religion, education, and entrepreneurship. Those, and we can go into each of those, but those are the four pillars that I think if we were to invest in as a society, we would start to see a whole generation of young people move away from this ideology of victimhood and dependency and grievance to hope, empowerment, and agency. You know, this blame the victim narrative that you describe on the surface, you know, it might seem you are talking about, you know, people needing to exercise agency, kind of make decisions for themselves mm -hmm. as and, you know, overcome m maybe their victimhood or, or something of this nature. But so, so explain to me exactly what the problem with this view is. Well, you know, blame the victim in some ways is infantilizing the very people that you're talking about. So mm. let's talk about race and crime. There, unfortunately, there are disproportionate numbers, for example, of black men that are incarcerated relative to their percentage in the population. And there are those that say, well, that's just a, a result of systemic racism. It's almost as if, it's almost as if they have no power. They're just in a system that's driving them towards uh, achieving those outcomes. And if you have any other uh, answer to the problem other than structural discrimination, then you're blaming the victim. You're blaming them for the very circumstances that they're in. And the thing is, at some point, there has to be some kind of personal responsibility. There has to be some recognition that an individual is making a decision towards a certain type of behavior. You know, I study, for example, um, 
the implosion of the family in certain segments of our society. Like the non-marital birth rate, for example, in our country, for women 24 and under, has been in the 70% for well over a decade. It's 61% of uh, white women and 91% uh, of black women 24 and under. These numbers are staggering. And sometimes when you point these types of data out, some people say, well, that's just the result of the conditions that they're in. I say, well, that might be true and we need to work on structural factors. And again, I'll, I can talk about some things that I certainly work on, but we can't ignore that if, if people are making decisions to have children, uh, that they, have, they are a player, they are an architect um, in their own outcomes. Some people say, well, you're blaming the victim. I say, no, we just have to acknowledge that when we're looking at social conditions, we have to analyze the role of structural barriers while also recognizing the importance of individual decision-making and personal responsibility. This is why I run schools. I run schools to let kids know that they can do hard things, that they aren't just, as Martin Luther King says, just flotsam and jetsam on the river of life, that they're just, they just go with the flow, that they have the ability to turn the tide, even if their circumstances may suggest otherwise. So I think, I think what you're saying is the reality is that there are structural things, and those structural things we need to be honest about what those are, look at the actual data from studies like the ones you've described, yep. and given and irrespective of those realities, there are also tools yes. for people to use to, to transcend some of those realities. 100%. Right? 100%. So, and it's, it's not a black and white situation. No, and I think what we've lost in our country is this, this inability to deal with this nuance. In New York City, there is a legislative cap right now on starting a public charter school. So if you had a great idea to open a great school to serve all these kids that need more high quality educational options, you couldn't do it. That's an example of a real structural barrier. That is a policy barrier. That's why we should be fighting for school choice, fighting for more educational freedom. A seven-year-old can't solve that problem on their own, right? So that's an example of a structural barrier that I acknowledge. But that doesn't take the seven-year-old off the hook for being able to go to school, still apply themselves, become part of a supportive within their own family or community that will help them thrive. And I run schools to create environments to help kids build that capacity, that overcomers mindset. So that's what I say, well, we can, have, we can acknowledge structural barriers, which today, by the way, are often not on the dimension of race as much as it's often purported to be. But as an example, as relates to education, that's a real example of a barrier. But we have to fight that battle simultaneously to the idea of cultivating this idea of agency within young people who need to succeed regardless of their circumstance.